Welcome to part three of section 1.2 of the CompTIA Security Plus exam, where we're talking about comparing and contrasting types of attacks. In this video, I'll be addressing network and wireless attacks. Section 1.2 talks about many different types of attacks. In this part, I'll be talking about hijacking and related attacks, such as clickjacking, session hijacking, URL hijacking, MAC and IP spoofing. I'll also discuss network and wireless attacks, such as denial of service, man in the middle, amplification, ARP poisoning, rogue access points, jamming, and bluejacking. A hijacking attack tries to take over an application or web browser from an end user. There are multiple forms. First I'll talk about is clickjacking, where it's tricking a web user into clicking on a spoofed button or graphic. An attacker uses multiple transparent or opaque layers to trick a user into clicking a button or link on another page when they were intending to click on the top level page. There's also session hijacking or cookie hijacking where an exploitation of a valid computer session to gain unauthorized access to information or services. It's exploiting that valid computer session through a cookie. Third type is that URL hijacking, also known as typo squatting, where the attacker registers a domain similar to a well-known domain, such as Google. You see some examples on your screen. Some people might not notice the three O's in Google. Computer networks are also platforms for hijacking, common form is MAC spoofing. The media access control address is hard-coded into a network interface card. We use network interface cards for any type of networking, IP-based. Some drivers allow the MAC address to be changed, so I can change my MAC address as an attacker to be your MAC address to defeat some security defenses. You see the example on your screen. IP spoofing is a similar type of attack although it's against the IP layer of the network. It's a technique used to gain unauthorized access to machines whereby the attacker illicitly impersonates another machine by manipulating IP packets. IP spoofing involves modifying the packet header with a forged or spoofed IP address, a checksum, and the order value. The graphic on your screen shows how it is done. ARP spoofing is another form of a network hijack attack. ARP is on layer two of the OSI levels. It's when an attacker sends a fake ARP address resolution protocol message over a local area network. This results in the linking of an attacker's MAC address with the IP address of a legitimate computer or server on the network. A man in the middle attack is another form of network attack. It's where an attacker secretly relays and possibly alters the communication between two parties who believe they are directly communicating with each other. You see the example on your screen, someone who's bypassing between a client and a server. The attacker may either observe a confidentiality attack or alter the data. A denial of service attack or DOS attack it's basically preventing access to resources by users authorized to use those. It's attacking systems availability. It may accomplish the ability to deny access to information application systems. So it could be done over the network or it could be done within a system to take down an application. It could be used to crash the operating system to force a reboot potentially to install malicious software or it can fill the communications channel of a network and prevent access by any authorized users. A distributed denial of service attack, DDoS, is a form of a DOS attack. It's using multiple compromised computer systems as the source of the network traffic. So we'll have hundreds of zombie computers attacking the victim. It amplifies the concept of a DOS attack by using multiple computer systems, often through botnets, to conduct the attack against a single system or organization. There are many examples of DOS and DDoS attacks I recommend you read about. Ways to prevent or protect against DOS and DDoS attacks. First is to work with your internet service provider or network provider. They will often provide some layers of defense for you and your organization. You can also install border protection such as an intrusion detection protection system. Updating your network appliances, operating systems, and applications is also another good defense mechanism. Lastly, 
end user systems should be up to date and you should deploy antivirus basically to reduce the prevalence of bots on end user systems. Consider these and other good DDoS and DOS prevention mechanisms. Another attack methodology we see is the amplification attack. The goal of the attacker is to get the response to the request to a greater than a one-to-one -one ratio. Additional bandwidth traffic works to congest and slow the responding server down. It amplifies what is currently happening. The ratio achieved is known as the amplification factor. And high numbers are possible with UDP-based protocols such as NTP, Chargen, and DNS. It's usually employed as part of a DDoS attack. Domain hijacking, DNS poisoning, and DNS spoofing takes advantage of address resolution. If you recall, DNS, domain name system, is the address resolution protocol that is used to translate common names, web URLs, to their corresponding IP addresses. DNS poisoning occurs when an attacker alters the domain name to IP address mappings in a DNS system to redirect traffic to a rogue system or perform a DOS attack. DNS spoofing is when an attacker sends false replies to a requesting system in place of a valid DNS response. Protections include using your own internal or well-known DNS servers and use authoritative DNS sources. Wireless networks are also under attack. One method is using an evil twin. It's where the attacker installs a wireless access point that acts like the wireless access point installed by the well-known service. It's a rogue wireless access point posing as a legitimate wireless service provider to intercept information that a user transmits. A rogue access point is any wireless access point added to your network that has not been authorized. So say someone runs out to Best Buy or in your organization to buy their own wireless access point, plugs it into your production network. That's a rogue AP. Initialization vector is a concept we talk about in the encryption section. It's an arbitrary number that can be used along with a secret key for data encryption. This number, also called a nonce, is employed only one time in any session. If the IV is weak, as in with wireless equivalency protocol, WEP, it may be reused. Jamming is another form of wireless attack where you're causing interference with a wireless signal. So it's preventing others from using that Wi-Fi service. Not only are there attacks against IP wireless networks, but also personal area networks using Bluetooth. Bluejacking is one example. It's sending unsolicited messages like spam over a Bluetooth connection. So you could get Bluetooth spam on your watch, for example. Blue snarfing is the gaining of unauthorized access through a Bluetooth connection. It's also intercepting data through that Bluetooth connection. So if someone was blue snarfing, they could see the messages that came to my watch or how many steps I took today. In this video, I discussed hijacking, network, and wireless attacks. Let's practice on a few sample questions. Question one. Of the below term, which one best describes the type of attack that captures portions of a session to play back later to convince a host that it continues to communicate with the original system? The answer is D, replay attack. This is the definition for a replay attack. Question two. You have a user call you from a hotel saying there's an issue with your organization's website and that it looks like it's been compromised. You check it from your work and it appears fine. What is a likely cause associated with the user at a hotel? The answer is B, DNS poisoning. Most likely the hotel's DNS has been compromised so that hotel user is going to a different website and not actually your organization's website. This concludes part three where I talked about network and wireless attacks. And this concludes section 1.2 of the CompTIA Security Plus exam, where I talked about comparing and contrasting the different types of attacks. Refer to your study material for more information.